So say some gangsta is dissing your fly girl. You just give him one of these. So this is take two of the Kinnon song deck. The previous league was a bit of a meltdown, both from a player side. The deck ran into some stumbly bumblies. We had some mulls into oblivion that went nowhere. We tweaked the numbers on a few things. Uh, we're playing two Noxious Revival and a Narset Pirate of Veils now. And I put two Veil of Summers in the sideboard, and we got two Weather the Storm. We went down to two Weather the Storm. Other than that, this is the Wacky Wednesday Urian Amber Kinnon song list, or I'm just going to call this Kinnon's Song. So song of creation centered storm style deck that uses Kinnon Bodner Prodigy and a bunch of artifact mana uh, and zero mana artifacts along with Song of Creation to rip through your entire deck, play a Thassa's Oracle, and win the game. Jiggy Wiggy has been having some reasonable success with this. My previous league was a total meltdown, but plenty of very, very close matches. So we are going to do the very best we can to make this look a little bit more impressive. Just a, just a scotch. We did have some very impressive turn three and turn four kills. Against M. Stanzion. And we're on the play. So we're just going to take a nice nice green approach to these games. Let's see if we can take a green approach. Just embrace the moment and roll with things. For example, this hand is not impressive. We're on the play, but that doesn't make this good enough. We are a powerful, proactive deck. We're looking to do something better than that. This one's a zero lander, so we got to throw this one back and go to five. But that doesn't mean throwing away that seven was wrong. Just means the universe is planning for us to go to five here. So we're not going to worry about any of this. We're going to take take the attitude of the wonderful streamer that I've now uh, learned of the existence of, Pi Gonti, fabulous fellow. Streamed our deck to good results, and he is just cool as a cucumber at all times. So no reason to get aggravated. We got good people in the chat. We got a cool deck to play here. And that is a very keepable five. I think we're going to keep these cards. Let's go turn one goose, turn two, Ren and six, pick up the fetch land. Turn one goose, turn two drum, but that still doesn't get me to Urza. So we're just going to have to slow roll this and toss back some of these artifacts, which is a little bit unfortunate, but you know what? We're going to do just fine. We're just, just fine. Tell you something, folks. Everything, everything's coming up Millhouse. and plays a tap land. Love it. Does it mean we might be against Dredge? Sure. Uh, probably just going to play Emery this turn. So I don't need the land drop from Ren and Six. Emery could mill a Mox Amber, which gets us to Urza more easily. Yikes. <laughs> well, that's all right. I suppose we do have to be a little more careful now that we've cut down to two Noxious Revivals because, in theory, we want our Thassa's Oracle to be able to win the game with. Okay, it does look like it's against Dredge. So no Karn is not great. Maybe it's Jund? Like a super controlling Jund hand? Well, in either case. I 
pick Compadres, up the, pick up it the is imperative we crush the freedom fighters hey. before the start of the rainy season. And remember, a what shiny is that? new donkey for whoever brings me the head of Colonel Montoya. Welcome, welcome, XYZ Principe. That is a pain in the ass. I did not think we were going to be against Teamer Pile with Bloodstained Mire in it. But here we are. So... Uh, I can't remember. You, you, I visited your chat, uh, Principe, and I can't remember it was Principe, Principe, Principe. I know I asked you about it, and I know you told me, so my apologies. All right, well, they're also stumbling a bit here with whatever the hell they're playing. Maybe it's as foretold? Okay, well, that's one of our best possible draws. Although if they have, I was going to say, if they have a lightning bolt, they just bolt my emery with the uh, bobble on the stack, but... So, opt on top. Oh, maybe there's Storm? No, not with Spell Pierce in the main deck. Does the C make a K sound in Principe, Principe? It depends on what language it's coming from, because it could be Latin, it could be... Yeah, okay. What is this? Is this Rhinos? It's ancestral. Okay. Ancestral's not too bad. Because they just went uh, two cards to draw three cards, so it's really not all that impressive. And then uh, I'm going to get to make a food, and as long as I draw a land next turn, um, then we can play this Urza. Mox Amber is a great pickup here. You're Brazilian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it is it like a, the X, the the like the Afo Sheche? Or Cacheche? I know there's some of your percuss percussion instruments, like the, the shakers and some of the drums. Of the uh, the X, which is like a sh. I know my brain melted when I found out how the uh, Mexican region Oaxaca is spelled. That is not spelled at all like you would think. If you've never seen it, um, trying to look up Oaxaca based on how it's pronounced in English and how you would think that that's spelled, that's uh, not going to work out for you. They're discarding the hand size? What in the hell? Discards force and negation. Interesting. Okay. Well, we've got an Urza to play. So far, they've played Spell Pierce and they've discarded a Force of Negation, so that kind of speaks positively to the potential of this Urza resolving this turn. Um, yeah, all right, well. Get in there, buddy. Main deck, mystical dispute. Okay. 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 Pitch a sp Simeon Spirit Guide. Plays Electro Dominance. Okay. Is this Rhinos? Yeah, this is Rhinos. Okay, so next turn we've got to play and escape Uro. We don't have to play and escape it. I think we could, we're pretty close, though. Four, five, six. Yeah. Should be able to play and escape Uro next turn. So that's not too bad. Main deck, Mystical Dispute. So their, their deck is very insulated against control decks.
They just want to function on low low mana, low mana and pitch cards, which I guess makes sense. So. Found a land. It cracked for eight here. You think we crush them though? I mean, this multi five in game one is not working out too well, and we're gonna have to shock to play the Uro front side. Um, hopefully, the bobble gets us where we need to go. And the rest of my deck has. 15 more lands in it, which is not not a lot to draw out of 63 cards. We've got Electro Dominance on top, but that doesn't matter if they don't have a payoff card. So, let's see. Kinnon is very good here. So, let's play Kinnon first, because I have... No, we're going to shock the Steam Vents first, because... Okay, so with Kinnon... Ken is just paying for himself already. So Kinnon does not affect the math on anything else we're doing. Okay, cool. Uh, Bobble. Bobble doesn't affect anything either for this turn. Um, so... One, two, three. This taps for double green right now. Yeah. So we just need one more mana from any kind of source. Springleaf Drum works. Another Mox Amber works. Lots of good hits here. Hey! Y'all remember how I said there was that card that worked? That's the one. That's the one. Please do not spell pierce me or otherwise. Cool. Okay. Green, green. Blue, blue. Arrow. So. Okay. We're somehow not that far down on clock. Can't play that this turn, but it doesn't matter because I don't have a song in play. Game is looking pretty good. Thank you, Early Emery, for scooping us out of this. Thank you, opponent, for not having infinite turn one fatal pushes. That that uh, matchup against, was it FTZ last time? That was pretty unacceptable. How are you going to beat my 6-6 opponent? All right, they're looking for another payoff spell because they have an Electro Dominance in their hand. So they need three mana for, uh, what is it called? Finale of Red, the Red Finale. Finale of Promise. Okay, that's a tap land, good. Interested to see if they attack here. Yeah. So Kinnon really putting in putting in the work. Um, we're hoping to draw, I think, Song of Creation here would be ideal. Got to be careful if they Electro Dominance in another Crashing Footfalls. Echo of Eons. Okay, well, let's see what we draw with this Astrolabe first. Might be getting Uriah in this turn. Because a four five is pretty decent to have against their two four fours. Urza is great. Um, let's go ahead and shock this. I think I can bleed that. Oh, I've tapped all my snow mana again. So one of the weird things you have to watch out for in these decks is you have to keep your snow mana a lot of the time. Which is not, it's weird because you don't really want to do it that way most of the time when you're playing Magic. Because the, the snows are the basics, so they only tap for a single color. 
But if you draw into more Astrolabes, you'll be happy you have them. So um, I think we can attack with Uro because I've also got a 5-5 five, five Construct. And we can also... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... There's no food. 7... Depending on what I draw, I might be able to Urian. Okay. Sure. What is this? Another Crashing Footfalls? That's fine. So we're going to kill one of the Rhinos. Yeah, there's the Astrolabe to punish me. Just... Coming in clutch. Triple Rhino block, yeah, that's fine. One, two, three. Okay, so I could play the Echo of Eons here. I'm wondering if I should, because I could play out Ornithopter and then play the Echo, but I don't know how much further it goes from there. I, th I think. I think we're safe to do the echo next turn when I have more mana. Yeah, I think we're fine too. Might as well play out the Ornithopter. Doesn't really hurt. Makes my um, construct into a 6 6. So we can kill one Rhino with a construct, and we can chump block another with an Ornithopter, and the construct won't die post combat. So we'll, we'll be able to absorb 4, 5, 6 damage. Okay. We do need to avoid them hitting a restore balance. I don't think they're going to attack here, though. Because the crackback... Yeah, the crackback from my side is really scary. And we have Urian for next turn, so we're just going to kind of go off a little bit. Assuming we don't draw Song of Creation. If we draw Song of Creation, Finale of Promises on top. So that was what I was looking out for before. So there's a good chance we're going to Echo this turn. See what we hit first. Okay. Multiple astrolabes. Death echo? Okay. We're gonna echo and maybe just win the game on the spot. Noxious revival. If echo hits song, we win. I guess it depends on how much mana. So one, two, three, four. So I can basically echo off of very little. The, pro the problem I have with echo is that... They're playing Force of Negation, Jiggy. Right now they have one card in hand, and I know the top card of their library. So I don't I don't actually think that Echo is where I want to be. I think what I want to do is attack with this Construct, then play Uro and another Urza or Urian. So I actually don't think we're Echoing this game, because, because there's a specific reason it's a bad idea. I'm going to attack with this Construct. If they block with two Rhinos, I'm just going to make a food and have a 9-9. Nine -nine. We're just going to take it, for sure. Let's play a second Emery um, so that I mill myself. And since we're going to be playing something afterwards, we'll, we'll go through Astrolabes. Uh, we'll keep the one that is not summoning sick. This is just to give me a better uh, better casting on, on Uro. Uh, I'm not locking one of their guys with an Urza, so. Play this guy, uh, Exile Urza. Actually, okay, so if we, I do, I should remember that we have um, Echo in the deck, which does shuffle cards back in, but doesn't really matter too much. Take out one of these baubles. Cast Uro. So we're we're just we're just doing the mid range thing here. We're just putting out an insurmountable board, and we're just gonna win the game that way. Okay, um, so play my bobble. Dual axes, exactly. So that that was the question I had for you um, about this version of the deck. Was can does does it function? like this um, because one of the things i liked a lot about the um, breach decks the urza breach decks was that they did function on both axes all right so if i spend two to make a food 
then I don't have enough. So we, we're, we're just going to play Urian like that. They have one card in hand, so if it counters this, we're not dead. In fact, we're not even in that much trouble. Okay, now let's actually resolve my Uro or my Urian correctly because last game I fucked it up somehow. Okay, done. Like I didn't even slide one of my Urzas. It was weird. Okay, I'm gonna stack my triggers. Oh, I did not kick Moto in between leagues. All right. As soon as this match is over, we are going to um, restart Magic Gathering Online. Because it gets chonky. Actually, we could do it during sideboarding. They might be conceding right now. Nope. Well, can I swing for lethal next turn? So they're at seven. They're going to take four from Urian. They have to block my Construct. They have to block my Urza. Or not my Urza, my Uro. And then they can block the Kinnon. They take one, two. I'm one point short because both Ornithopter and Gilded Goose have zero power. Yikes. Explosion summon for 40. Nice. Did you also let them draw 40 cards? It's good to be generous. You gotta be a giver. Good, good, good. All right, what do you got? This is finale for two. Electro Dominance of Crashing Footfalls. Okay. Do they have a payoff in their hand? And if so, is it restore balance? I really hope not. Restore balance could be devastating. Oh no, it might be. So I was thinking about this a second ago. I think this is actually fine because... <laughs> We just like keep, oh, they're sacking their rhinos too. Okay, maybe this is not as good. Yeah, we're gonna end up with zero creatures. Fuck, I thought they were gonna have to leave us with three. Um, I thought they were gonna have to leave us with three creatures. This is about to be very, very awkward. But actually we should be able to rebuild pretty well. So let's see what happens. So they, they must have the restore balance. Yeah. Okay, so I can put something on top of my deck before I'm forced to discard my hand. Um, and I have Mox Amber, Mistress Bubble, Springleaf Drum, these three labes, two foods. So if I have Thopter, I have access to one mana. But then they're going to have two Rhinos and the Gargadon? Shit. I thought I was going to get to keep some creatures against this. Yeah, I'm just fucked, aren't I? I cannot believe we're going to lose the game! Because they are actually playing Restore Balance. It was, it was literally the last card in their hand. And I was thinking, that's the only thing that could beat me, right? 
I mean, so we'll bobble them. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Oh, and I, I didn't cast a Noxious Revival. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I cannot believe this is not going to be good enough to get us through this. Well, <laughs> for some reason, for some reason, I thought the suspended Gargadon didn't necessarily mean they were actually playing the Restore Balance, because Restore Balance being the only white card in your deck and being, I don't know, I, I maybe I was just being goofy and greedy. All right, let's see if we somehow draw out of this. I don't know what we could draw. Nope. Nope, just dead. Son of a bitch. All right, well, we get the board in Veil. Uh, I'm going to kick my client. <sighs> God, that is that is really frustrating. All right, it'll be fine. It's naive of you. Yeah, yeah, it's true. No, that's not what I want. They caught us off guard. Well, I, I, it was, it was a thought in my mind, Jiggy. But I was looking at their graveyard and I was thinking, I know they have finale, have promise on top. They've got one card in hand, like, and I, I just didn't say anything about it because I was like, there's no way it's going to be restore balance, right? Because they're playing three other colors, right? They, they wouldn't, they wouldn't play restore balance without playing white mana, because I've seen the versions, the blue red uh, electro balance decks that they'll play some white sources, right? But not this one. Okay, we are back. Yeah, I think I think the matchup's still good, but it's just gonna be tricky to win on clock. I was really hoping we were gonna take that game one. It's all good. All good, folks. We definitely want to keep the Thassa's Oracle for this matchup. Um, two Noxious Revivals is as low as I want to go, so let's take out Ornithopter. I think we board out Echo in this matchup because echoing against them is super, super risky. Uh, or Narset, actually, because they're, they're not drawing. Well, yes, they are. They've got the... I want the Echo, but I have no idea what to cut. Karn is not particularly good here, right? So I cut a Thopter. I don't want to cut. It's just a drum. No, Ren. It's a Ren and Six. It's a Ren and Six. We'll just cut a Ren and Six. All right. Got to make sure we play relatively speedy. Hand is a banger. They also had like the nuts interaction in the early game, but their hand. But on the on the flip side of that, their hand wasn't very explosive or anything. So, I don't really want to take that as necessarily a good thing. Echo in the opener sucks though, but I think it is generally a good add to the deck. We just we just keep drawing it in the early game nonstop. Like Emery, Emery milling it is so much preferable, but so much more preferable, much more preferable. Preferable. Emery milling the Echo of Aeons is preferable, but. It's not a bad draw. I should have played the Vista there because I want to get an island. And I could have bobbled myself, but we're going to Astrolabe this turn anyway. No, I could have bobbled myself after the Astrolabe with the fetch land up. Thanks. <laughs> Definitely not managing these early game steps as closely as I could be.
Okay, Gargadon is out there. What are you going to draw, opponent? They are going to draw Fiery Islet. Okay. Karn. Karn is interesting. So what could Karn get me? Coding, I can't play that yet. Crypt doesn't do anything yet. No, nothing. I don't really want to Deific Spear against them. It is effective, but I don't need to. It's going to have to get green, actually. Alrighty. So this should be their turn to try to do stuff. Hopefully they don't have the quick restore balance because they have the Gargadon already. So quick restore balance would be really bad news for us because we have no way to interact with it. I don't know if you're right about this matchup, Jiggy. This seems like it could be really, really bad for us. Because we just don't have any way to interact with what they're doing. We can go as fast as they do, give or take. But they play the spell pierces and, and they had the mystical disputes in game one. Which were really surprising. Probably have a braids here post board. Balance is the breaker. I don't think it's just balance though. I mean, balance is good. Yeah. I, also, I mean, I also didn't realize they were on it, obviously, because I played right into it, but... Okay, so... I can use Renin 6 to pick up one of these lands, but can we play this Uro this turn? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know that. I'm just... I think I'm playing this uh, Uro this turn anyway. Uh, we're not able to escape it, but maybe next turn. Hopefully they have nothing more devastating than the two rhinos for now. Narset could be good in theory. But this turn is going to be making another food. If we top deck a cannon, we're in really good shape. Yeah, it, I mean, it was their last card in their hand, but that was a long game. They had plenty of time to draw it. So... I don't feel like it was like indecent for them to have it there. And they had the Gargan on the turn before. It was like the turn before. One one or one or two turns before the, the they had that turn with the balance. Visions, good. Visions means I'm not getting balanced this turn. If they attack down Ren 6, then we get to escape Uro next turn in addition to playing Narset. Well, I should have boarded in the Force of Vigors because of As Foretold. They didn't play any in game one, but they were definitely playing them in their list. They split? That's so weird. Do they want to knock down my Renin 6 without killing it specifically? If so, that is an incredibly strange line. Ah, I see. Okay. What else are you playing? Nothing? Oh, that's... That's good for us, right? That's gotta be good for us. Bloop. 
Goose is hatching little eggs. Just just laying laying little egg egglets. Just bloop. Cannon. Well, that's just insanity, I think. Cannon into Uro. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Uro. Maybe Narset? I'm definitely playing Uro. It's a bad way to tap. Hold on. There we go. Now I have Veil up. I actually caught myself doing a dumb. Yay! I mean, I have Gilded Deuce too, but. Because they get Mystic Dispute here. Mystical dispute. Let's go dispute. Well, let's see how they goes. That's not the best draw. So I don't think I want to play Narset here. I mean, I do, but I, I don't. I don't want to go down having Veil up. So, which I guess doesn't really make sense on their turn, but because most of the things they they're gonna play are red or, God bless it, white. Visions. Oh no. So they can set up their next turn. Puts double bottom. Okay. So hopefully they drew something they were unhappy with. They're attacking. Okay. Definitely going to block. Curious if they have Bolt or something. Just sack the Rhino to the Gargadon. Maybe they're going to restore balance. They just want to get the extra four. But if they were going to do Gargan, we'll have haste. Okay. Sure. Okay. Can't lay another food, but that's okay. We've drawn zero Song of Creations, which is kind of a... Kind of a rough go. Just get the island here. Okay. So if I Karn, Karn into Damping Sphere is pretty good. Obviously, Damping Sphere is a bit of a problem for us. Um, Karn into Ensnaring Bridge plus. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten mana. So Narset, Karn, and Bridge is possible. Play Narset first, see where we go with that. Okay, I think they're F6. Song, okay. Song sounds like fun. So let's, let's, let's go, let's go. We're gonna Song into Veil. So I do need red. Alright, we gotta we gotta be a little quicker here. Red, blue, green, okay, song. Okay. 
draw two. We have two more mana on the goose. Okay, Steam Vents is okay. Astrolabe is really, really bad. Shit. God, that's awful. So I can't play anything here? Fudge. I can't believe I just instantly fizzled on that. <sighs> yeah. Well, that's where we're at. We do get to discard the Echo of Eon, so maybe next turn? But <sighs> they've got the Gargadon on Suspend, so I really... Oh, boy. This is a yikes. We're in some potential trouble. We'll see. On the upside, on the upside, we have Cannon, Gilded Goose, and we've got Uro and Echo in our graveyard. So none of those, Echo or Uro, neither of those have to resolve for us to be able to win this game. We just have to be able to cast them. Rhino's probably going to attack Narset. I'm pretty sure I'm going to block with the Goose because I've got more mana than I know what to do with, and keeping Narset in play against the deck with um, Ancestral Vision seems good. Looks like we made it. Noxious Revival, perfect. So let's put Astrolabe on top. No, hold on. Let's put um, Veil somewhere on top. Play the goose. Yeah. Play the goose. Right. Double Thopter. All right. So basically, we win, but we need to make sure we don't lose on time. So I need to draw my entire deck and find my fastest oracle, but we can make it uncountable multiple times. My opponent has not yet f 6 so that makes me think they must have a piece of interaction, so we're going to have to play this as quickly as possible because we still have another game to win. Tap that, play this, please. Thank you. Interestingly, this actually might be a faster win than uh, when you have to um, ballista someone to death. All right, Jiggy, this deck is absolute gasoline. Just FYI. I know you know that, but like, holy crap, dude. I mean, even if I lose this match on time, I'm going to be pretty satisfied with winning this game out of, out of this situation. Okay, we got the Oracle, so we just need to get through the 35 cards remaining in my deck. Let's play the Veil now, so everything else that I play from now on is uncounterable. Okay, uh, let's play an Urza, because that just gives us more mana. Really hoping they concede early. We drew a lot of our uh, zeros early, and the problem with that is it means playing through the rest of this turn becomes slightly more complicated. Don't have an Emery in play yet, so we'll play an Emery. There's a Drum and Astrolabe as well. Cool. Um, one of the nice things about Moto is that we can see the exact number of cards in in our library, which means that um, deciding whether or not to have an odd or even number when you get to the end of the line here, um, which is something you'd have to do in paper, you'd have to count your library. Um, we can just look and see. Yeah, I'm aware the clock is red. But thank you. I appreciate your concern. So Emery makes this much faster. 
Uh, I think we're there. I'm going to play the goose first. I need to find green mana. This is green mana. So goose puts me on four cards, and we definitely have enough devotion right now. So now we could play our oracle. Okay, that's it. We got there. Unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to be able to win the final game, but... Okay. I really doubt we'll be able to win the final game in time, but we'll see if we can. I think I want these Force of Vigors. I'm going to keep all our green cards as much as possible. Another Ren 6 could go out, and... Maybe a Karn. Karn was pretty lackluster. That was a really good game for the deck. It's just going to be really hard to win this match. They don't play a lot of removal. Oh, my goodness. I need something better. This is better. It's turn one Emery. I'll take it. I'm going to bottom the Karn here. Uh, we flipped a Mox Amber, which gives me another mana next turn. Problem is we don't have any colors going on, so... Hand is sketchy. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't want to attack in case of, um, Electro Dominance into, uh, Rhinos. Hopefully this is just draw three. Nope. All right. We're potentially in a lot of trouble. We do have three mana, so if I draw a green source, we can play the song right away. On the plus side, at least we can lose this game before we clock out. So we weren't able to win the game. Okay, this is going to block a little bit, maybe? Nope. Nope. Not even, not even allowed to do that. I guess I can Ornithopter to block two damage here, and I don't... I should have done that last turn, actually, but I was thinking about mana instead. Yeah, we're just, we're just going to lose on clock at minimum. And additionally, the fact that I just didn't, didn't hit any colored mana. So going to four here, and then, yeah, even if I pull the trick with the Ornithopter again next turn, we're just dead. And I've asked for Told. And Ancestral Visions, good lord. All right. We got got, I think. Yeah. Can't fix my colors. Yikes. Well, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Jiggy, this might be the first time where I've told people that I was going to burn a bunch of tickets on a deck and it's actually happening. I'm not really sure why, because you've had a res relatively good amount of success with it. I don't know if it's just that I haven't been thinking about it enough or that the draws on my side versus the opponent's side have been actually that bad, but 
it's certainly not looking impressive, which is sad. It's been a really weird set of circumstances. Like we ran into uh, As For Told playing a bunch of main deck blue hate including Mystical Dispute. Because I've seen them playing Spell Pierce before, but they they had specifically Mystical Dispute for specifically my Urza. Like, that was just so, so unexpected. on the draw this time. Let's see if we can do a little bit better. Uriah, let's do it. <laughs> Zero lander, womp womp. Much better. Uh, ship the echo. Yeah, for sure. Turn two Emery and potentially more. Let's see what else is going on. Second goose ain't not bad. Oh no, it's this deck. All right, well, that's a bit of a pain in the butt. Luckily, we have the Emery already. Shit. Um, let's get a blue green. This can get me, yeah. Ah, no, 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 no. Nah, that's not what I meant to do. I mean, I totally meant to do that because then Legendary One Drop would be sweet. The very first version of any of these decks that I did well with uh, did have a single copy of uh, Ovia Pashiri. Card, Ovia. I never cast her in that league. Yeah, that card. So we're against the Gyruda deck, the Gyruda Chalice deck. Christ. Okay. What's up, Zanny? I've been crashing and burning a little bit with this wild list from Jiggy, but it is truly excellent. You're rooting for them. Yeah, I figured you would be. Yeah, the green one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, we got an Urza. Double Chalice. We need to find a Karn ASAP. Um, can't make a food. Let's just attack. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm sure it is. Uh, someone else had it in the in the most recent deck dump, I think. Because there was there was the the oh uh, Shine O nine O five. Yeah. The, the original 5-0 player um, came back and got it again. So uh, they did it. They did it again. So the 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 history with that deck is is they did it, then you did it, then they did it again. Love it. Yeah, I mean, it's a thing. I played it. I did not do as well, but it was pretty good. I like I like my red green lands deck better, but my red green lands deck doesn't play good payoffs like uh, Primeval Titan. I think if I had decided to play good decks like Primeval Titan, um, then or good payoffs like Primeval Titan, we probably 
it probably would have been a better deck, but uh, they they found a good good way to take it. So this doesn't do anything right now. I think we're gonna go attack, 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 and then I can't get and play Orion. Luckily, the Gyruda in their deck is more of a. more of a fair card than it used to be they, they don't they don't have any way to like instantly win the game and most of the time it doesn't flip something particularly good afterwards that said i think i'm just going to cast a second urza here and leave a green up um, in case they get the sire of insanity because if they get sire of insanity i'm going to be forced to discard my hand anyway so let's play a second urza get the second construct that way and then if we want a urian we're going to do it all in one turn Keep the new Urza, because he's shinier. Okay. I'm going to have two 5-5s five next turn, uh, which will be... which will have the potential of becoming 6-6s. Six yeah, here comes Gyruda. 1-4. Uh, <laughs> we crashed and burned. But we had three matches that were 1-2s. Oh, they got, the, they got the neat one. Cyberclaw Terror. Let's see if they do better than I ever did. Nope. They can take my Ornithopter. Oh, they, they're playing more Gyrudas? Oh. Oh, and then they hit a Primeval Titan. God bless it. When I played that deck, it wasn't playing any Gyrudas. Shit. What happened last match? We, we lost the last one to a turn two uh, double Rhino. They just turned two, four, four tramples, and we died. Yeah, I like this. I like that they're playing more Gyruda. I, I did not appreciate the version that was like not playing any Gyrudas in the main deck. Because with 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 the 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 one that you five would with, every single time I played a Gyruda, we got like a Sakura Tri Builder. It was really shitty. Compadres, it is Thanks for the follow we Bruno the before the start of the rainy season. And remember. A shiny new donkey for whoever brings me the head of Colonel Montoya. So we're not we're not toast here, um, but I really wish we had Shadow Spear. Yikes! And I really wish my graveyard hadn't gotten nuked there. That had some cool stuff in it. Um, and I really wish there wasn't two ridiculous chalices in play. But you know, beggar not chooser. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have to use both my constructs to fetch and play Urian, but I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah. I suppose I could leave one of the constructs up and sack of food, but that doesn't really that doesn't really get me anywhere. Wait, what does this say? A special area for companion waiting to be cast. That is not the way that works at all. I, I really, really hate that for some reason in Magic Online, that that it just, I, uh, I don't know. I've played non-clone versions that had Gyruda in the main, but most of them were Aether Mage's touch decks. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm an old man who's afraid of change. All right, don't worry about me. Just just play the good decks and stay over in your in your in your play zone. Okay, so hopefully we mill an Uro here, and then they don't bog me again. There's an Uro. So phase one complete. I got two more song creations in my deck. One of them, or two of them, got exiled already. It's a freaking double chalice draw. The chalice on one was not that big of a problem, but they also hit a chalice on zero. That's such a pain in the ass. We got three seven seven constructs though. That's pretty good. Makes it makes attacking somewhat untenable for them. But with prime time and field of the dead, they're still. They're still good to go. I wonder how many fields they're playing. Because one of the versions I was looking at had three or four. 
I've been missing Shadow Spear too. Yeah, I, <laughs> I I like this deck, Jiggy, but I I the yeah, but what are you gonna do? Play one Shadow Spear with no Trinket Mages? Like, come on, man. Talk sense. That's that's not a thing, right? I'm just saying, like honestly, right? Is that is that a thing? Because I also oh thanks, Mike. Um, because maybe non combo version might be the way to go. I th I I always thought it was. The the thing is, all you need to do is play two song of creations. Because like when I'm playing this deck, I just want to stop halfway through. I don't want to keep going with the song. I just want to stop because going through your whole deck with the song is unnecessary. And I think, um, I think Pygonti kind of nailed it with Karn getting time sieve. It's not even about killing yourself though. What you should, what you should be able to do is, um, uh, with the time sieve, you, you play an Urza at some point, right? And you get a giant ass construct. And then you can play another Urza and get another giant construct. And then with the time sieve, you just take an extra turn and then you smash them with a bunch of constructs in your giant insurmountable board. And you should be able to win the game that way. Okay, so luckily we have this Uro in our graveyard. There was something I wanted to be aware of from their hand or something. Okay, whatever. Thopter. Mmm. I still think Thopter is a bad card. Okay, let's fire the Astrolabe into the Chalice and then play Uro. I actually think we're just going to hang out on the defensive. We, we killed their prime times, so we. Uh, don't need to worry so much about hold on before I play the Uro let's play Thassa's Oracle and look at the top seven cards of my deck put a song on top play Uro for and then can I play the song only if I mm, Kinnon's maybe better? The song's probably fine. The question is, can I play the song? Okay, so green, green, blue, blue, then green, red, blue, blue. So I have to use constructs to do it, which I'm not a huge fan of, but okay, that's fine. We'll do it. We'll do it that way. So play a row. You just pass with song in hand. Oh yeah. Why am I being stupid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Song doesn't cause song to discard. I don't know what is wrong with my brain tonight. I've just been like, just stupid all the way. They do have a blast zone. I'm not really worried about that because they can't get it down to zero. So my constructs and my food tokens are safe. I did screw up how I tapped at some point because I should have access to this Gilded Goose uh, to make another food. But I've got 377, so I think I'm okay. Lost to Jun because I cast a double song and the fastest oracle was the second from the bottom. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be Titan. Ooh, it's bigger. What the hell? Okay, opponent is playing stuff that I'm not used to seeing in that deck. Are they are they playing Titan and Sire of Insanity? Am I getting punished for not playing this song out? I totally am. I think you should know, Jiggy, I'm about to get punished for not, not playing. Yep, yep. You know what? 
tonight was not supposed to be our night. That's okay. This league is still going out. Shadow Spear saved me. It can't save us. It's not in the deck. You cut it. You cut it, Jiggy. You did this. They're also going to have Primeval Titan, right? I don't know why they're... Oh, it's Double Sire. He hit the ground. Bang, bang. Double Sire is not really a problem. We're, we're winning this matchup right now. Not by like a huge margin or anything like that, but Urza's going to tear us ahead here. They can't attack. We can start cracking in with four. Yeah, but we're going to play the mid-range deck with two copies of Song. So these kind of games are going to happen more often. Okay, I think I'm attacking with Urion and Uro. Uro can just start clearing out some of their stuff. And I want to I want to get something going. That's a good draw. We're actually ahead on clock, so I'm not going to worry about it too much, but Uro's going to start sort of clearing through some of their some of their cards. Garuda. That's fair. It's funny that my opponent thinks that I care about these Sire of Insanities. The way... Oh, this is just going to get countered if I play it. The way my deck functions, it doesn't... We don't care about the Sires. That was not... Thanks, Urza. Thank you. All right. I guess we're just passing the turn. Hope you get a little luckier than the first league. Yeah. Peace out, Jiggy. And me too. I mean, this game's going okay so far, so. One Volley Acid Moss. Sure. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, they could eventually crank their Blast Son of Four. That would be bad. I really want this Urza. New set on Moto happens tomorrow, right? I have no idea. I have not been paying enough attention. Probably. Someone someone probably has the answer. I know the cards are in chests already, which is really stupid. So. No, it's live, but you can't buy packs. Like, it's really silly. What in the hell is happening? What? Okay, I'll take two. I want to crack chest, but I'm a hoarder. It, it's just not good. It just doesn't make good sense. Like, you, you, you shouldn't crack chest. It's, it's negative EV. The chests are worth more clothes. If you want to do anything with your chest, sell them for tickets to bots. They should be at their absolute highest right now, so... I'm just going to kill my opponent with my 1-4-5 flyer. So, I'm okay with this game state. Is it better for play points? Um, I think on average it's supposed to be. The problem is it's gambling. There, there's a percentage on each chest, right? So, like, you could open more play points, but you could also open less. And if you open less, like, what, what was the point? Right, let's hit a Karn. That's not a Karn. Eh, we Gucci. I don't need to do anything here. So yeah, I, I think technically each chest is going to open you more play points in theory than... Uh, I think they have to crank their Blast Zone to 5 here, though. Which is great for me, because it means I get to keep my Urza. No, they're going to go to 4. That's an interesting choice. So they're going after Urza rather than Urian. Urian's actually killing them. 
Is it better if I enjoy scratch off tickets? I don't bother answering. I already opened. I mean, you do you. Killing my Urza? Nope. What is this? Oh, shit. Oh, God. That is reach. It's a good draw, opponent. That's a good draw. Crossword scratch offs are great. Disagree. Out of all the forms of gambling that are mediocre and crappy, that is the most mediocre and most crappy. Must attack, you get to eat it. That's true. Uh, so Urz is going to eat it here. That's fine. Not good, but it's acceptable. I feel like I get my money's worth of time. Well, if you do, that's fine. Like I'm not, I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying I don't, don't condone it personally. But you, you do you. I don't condone any form of gambling, he says while playing Magic the Gathering online. Uh, yeah, we got an Uro. Got enough cards to fuel this Uro. We're gonna do that. Thanks, Sire of Insanity. Without you, I wouldn't have gotten this far. Karn? Well, that's just delightful. So Karn can finally kill some of their chalices. It's also really going to incentivize them to attack me. I forgot about that part. Uh, we're going to kill the chalice on one first. That stops things like Astrolabe. No gambling here, officer. Just not drawing any lands. Yay, skill-based. Yeah, I mean, that also happens. Crap, how many attackers do they have? Am I actually going to die? So they've got six. I can block profitably on most of them. So my three constructs are assigned to Sire, Sire, and Murakthar. They've got six zombies. I've got a Urian, Thassa's Oracle. Okay, so they're, they're just going all in, which is, which is fair enough. I need none of my artifacts to die. I honestly feel like this is a uh, desperation attack from my opponent. I don't, I don't want to attack. I don't want to block anything. Damn it. There we go. Uh, take six. Okay. That's fine. So I win. That exchange seemed amazing for me, but I don't know. <laughs> They don't have a Valkyrie in their deck, and even if they can, they just scoop. Cool. Yay, magic! Even though I'm against a green-black deck, I don't think I need Veil here, and I don't need know if I need Force, but I will be back in two seconds to try to figure that out further. Zanman, you tell me if I need Veil or Force. Oh, Force for the Chalices is probably good. Yeah. We'll figure out what we're cutting. Okie dokie. So, Ren and Six is really not great here. Let's cut one of those. I think we're going to go with our usual cut one of those and one Ornithopter. Yeah. Okay. Wait, does Narset do anything against them? It doesn't. Let's keep the Ren and Six if we can.
Did it fix? It did not. That's fine. Three red and six is probably enough, right? Probably, maybe. Okay, it's kind of a banger opener, as long as we don't get turn one chalice, which I don't think they can do. Right, chalice on zero though on turn one is a hundred percent a thing. Well, Luckily, we've got this Arkham's Astrolabe and Ren 6, so hopefully we draw out of this. Because we kept Double Bobble. A Double Bobble will, in fact, be useful uh, if we can get to that song of creation. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go! All right. Uh, if I get red, I can get green-blue. Or if I get green, I can get blue-red. Yeah, green to the blue-red. Yeah, that's probably the best one. And Karn. Nice. All right. 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 Now, ladies. So there's the potential that this chalice does nothing, which I love. I love the chalice doing nothing. Huge fan. Could actually get a basic here if I want to preserve my life total. Kind of do. Yeah, let's do that. Next turn we can play Thassa's Oracle, Springleaf Draw, and then a one mana thing. Put Garuda in their hand. That's a good sign. Woo. Okay, then. I think we're just going to set up as much mana as we can for post-song. Yeah. Okay. Do I want the force? No, because I'm just going to end up discarding it. Although I could just play it. I think, I think maybe not. For the benefit of Mare Bear, listen, nobody's nobody's chalice does less than mine. My chalice does the least. If anyone has a chalice that does less than mine, I just don't understand. Well, that sucks. Okay. Well, oh, we're, oh, we're close to casting song. That's a yikes. Was not expecting that. Okay. We can insulate ourselves from boil by grabbing stamping ground. Since I'm not doing anything else. Um, I think we're going to pick up the island as the land that we're going to play after the song. So next turn they should be able to Gyruda. As long as they don't hit Sire of Insanity, we're able, gonna be able to hit Song and kinda go off. So let's let's do a little let's do a little prayer. 
Okay, so here comes the demon. So let's hope we don't get shafted by it. I kind of have to beat that chalice before I'm able to go off. Okay, they got the primeval titan. Man, that chalice on zero is really brutal. Maybe I should have taken the force of vigor. Yeah, I well, no, because I can't I can't pitch for it on my turn. And the only green card I have right now is Song of Creation, so maybe it's not good enough. Okay, we're going to have a lot to contend with right now, so I think we have to Song. If we drew a Kin in this turn, I'm just not sure what that does. Bog me. God, that's so rude. So they've got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 power, but... Got 16 power. I've got the fastest oracles, fastest oracle to block. Wow, cannon was the best possible draw, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. But I don't. Once I song, I'm gonna have a land drop, which could give me a gilded goose, and gilded goose could dig me out of this. All right, all right, all right. We're all in, baby. So this goes for blue, then green, then red. We play the song, play a bobble, uh, yield, yield. Noxious revival, OK, which I don't really want to play for free right now. Emery is somewhat okay. Oh man, that chalice is a pain in the butt. Actually, we wouldn't be going anywhere with it right now, would we? No. So I can put something on top of my deck for next turn. I could draw more zero drops that'll just die to the chalice. I think we just have to hope that we top deck something sweet. Ran six doesn't do anything useful here. Yeah. It's all about the next turn. I can noxious a bobble. Which makes sure that I can start trying to go off next turn. Yeah, okay. Oh, we've got an Uro going in? Perfect. Okay, so as long as we live through the next turn, we get to start to try to go off, and we'll see how far we go. We've got Mishra's Bobble and Uro. As long as they don't have another Bajuka Bog, which I don't think that they do. They didn't get a second one at any point last game. We didn't lose our we didn't lose our Echo of Aeons, so Echo of Aeons is still in the deck. We're just getting a million zombies in a blast zone. Okay, so we're going to two. I suppose I could block the Gyruda. Yeah, and then I have Noxious Revivals in my deck. I have one more, right? I didn't lose. I didn't lose the other one. We could always just set up an insurmountable board in theory. So, Sylvan Karyatid, sure. Field, also sure. And there is an engineered explosives in my sideboard to grab with Karn. So if we hit that, we're good to go. So let's do it. Let's draw out of this. Let's do the nuts. I can... Okay. No! Uh, actually, we can do this. Yeah, because if I Emblem Renin 6, I could just play infinite, uh, well, not infinite, but I can play any lands I draw are copies of Noxious Revival, so this, this is fine. Okay, it's actually fine. It looks bad, but it's, it's okay. So There's like 99% chance to combo out here. Okay. 
obviously with a 1% margin there. So grab the retrace emblem, play Noxious Revival. We put oh Karn on top. Yeah, put Karn on top for a single green discard this land. Trigger draw two. Okay, Kinnon and Breeding Pool. Karn's on top. Um, play Breeding Pool, shock it. Tap Kinnon for blue. Filter one to green. Play Kinnon. Triggers. Okay, good. Keep the new Kinnon. Play the Karn. Uh, Karn's going to draw me two. So, okay, Emery's going to draw me two. Hopefully that's going to work out. Because I need to be able to play zeros. I have multiple land drops remaining. We could fizzle here. Okay, I th think we're going to make it. Thopter. Okay. Vista. Vista. Vista gets me green. Green gets me goose. Uh, I hope it gets me green. It does not get me green. Well, crap. I think we're dead. Okay. We died on the draw, it looks like. Yeah. Close. Close, close, close. But the turn... Turns, turn one, Chalice on zero just wrecked us there. So, can't quite get it. Almost, 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 almost. Okay. Let's go ahead and win game three here. I would really appreciate it if we were able to do that. I kind of screwed up there. I put a Force of Vigor on the bottom that I shouldn't have done. I think we had a somewhat clunky hand. So... Let's just draw the hottest of fire for game three here and just wreck it up. Wreck it up, wreck it up, wreck it up. This is the kind of banana stuff we do here on the Mana Symbol channel, so thanks folks for checking it out. We got some reasonable numbers of people just hanging out. It's good to see. Got 190 followers, we're on our way up to 200. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Let's do it. Let's do it. This is freaking wild right here. We can time twister. Friggin' time twister playing that shit in modern. It's crazy.
Um, ooh. Yikes. This has so many good pieces, but I don't think I can keep it. This has almost none of the good pieces, but I think I have to keep it. God. Ugh. I hate having you know this. Okay. Pitch the Noxious Revivals. Holy freaking crap. That is a big old raid from the Fluffy Wolf himself. You Thank you so much for hanging out, man. Lie. Spinning on by. Uh, we've got a super wild opener here in game uh, three against uh, the Jund Gyruda Titan deck. Um, it's actually been a really rough evening of matches. Jiggy Wiggy, who handed me this deck and helped me design the uh, Urian deck, which now has a wonderful primer available uh, through Reddit, um, also designed this crazy combo version, and it has been spectacularly bad for me, even though we had a really, really wonderful game against you. Um, here is the primer for anyone who's interested in the fair Uro deck. What does a mana symbol sound like? And then these Chalice of the Voids have just been beating us up. All right. Babble them. No. No, a mana symbol sounds like... Pss, pss. It's the Bernard Purdy. Oh, that's a bad draw. Okay. What's lit? Not this deck so far. This has been failing me spectacularly. But but spectacularly for the most part at least. At least it has been a wonderful adventure. And and isn't that what life is really all about? Well, that... That was one of the best possibles. Okay, so play Kinnon, and then we've got one, two, three. So unfortunately, we just have to activate the goose here to... Yeah. I'm not counting wrong, right? Yeah, one, two, three. If we had uh, Astrolabe or something, we'd be in a better spot with this, but that's fine. So crack food, add a mana, play the Karen. Bloop. Get out of here, you nerd. Attack you with Ornithopter. Boosh. Get the fuck out of here. Man, I've had so many raids tonight. Thank you, everyone who has come through here. We had a raid from Ashiok. You know, the raid from Fluffy Wolf. Um, I think there was another one in there. Oh, um, no, it was F. Paul Liz showed up and uh, was just checking out the channel, checking out the deck. So it has been a crazy, crazy exciting little little patch here for the Mana Symbol channel. So thank you folks for being a part of that. Okay. Castle Gerenbrig. But new, new demon kraken yet. I think they're gonna go get it. Yikes. Oh, that's a tilt. On the plus side, I can get liquid metal coating and. Right. Well, I can turn off the Garen Brig. And I'll have one, two, three, four, five mana in theory next turn for whatever they wanna play. Losing the land there was actually really bad in this circumstance. That helps. Okay, let's get an island. So if I play Kinnon, I can use Goose, get up to three mana. I don't think Bridge is a safe get. I think we're going to Liquid Metal and turn off their Castle Garen Brig. I think that's the plan. So let's do that. I don't have to play Kinnon this turn to do that, so I'm not going to. Uh, keeping the food is generally pretty useful. Oh, 
Okay, that's all I got. Let's hope this is good enough. Legit reading your primer. Oh, yeah. Oh, th this is not that deck, FYI. Crush the freedom this is not that the deck. Start of the rainy season. Um, but and if remember, you're talking about the fact that I linked YouTube videos in there to, to the deck's the evolution and stuff like that, uh, I just thought it was appropriate because people like to have the, the, the um, sort of real experience of what gameplay looks like. I mean, that's the reason why general gameplay videos are popular, right? So, gemstone caverns, sure. Oracle's not in the primer. No, so if you... Uh, this is what we're playing right now, and this is a uh, combo version based on um, sort of leaning into the Song of Creation angle. So it is not the same deck at all. Okay, so we can start attacking their mana here. Um, they're able to play Guy Ruda next turn. One, two, three, four, five. And if they play a land from their hand. So... We, we can't stop that from happening anymore. But Gairuda isn't necessarily going to end the game right away in their deck. So we just need to buy a little bit more time. Um, I think I'm going to play Thassa's Oracle to try to set up the next turn. And we'll see what's on top. Springleaf Drum, Snow-Covered Forest. Okay, so you can click no when you're doing Thassa's Oracle as a public service announcement. Because I didn't know that for the longest time. If you click no, what happens is you put both cards on the bottom. Um... So you won't draw either of the cards you saw, and you will draw a random card instead. Our deck is not doing the most impressive things right now, but we are able to Karn for Bridge next turn and still shut down their mana, so that might be useful. Depending on what they get with... Uh, I assume this is a Primeval Titan. If they don't get Blast Zone with it, then we're going to Bridge them. Heck, maybe even if they do get Blast Zone, we'll bridge them because it means they can't attack for a turn. Although hitting their mana means potentially they won't be able to cast the guy root of it's in their hand. Their deck has a lot of acceleration, but not necessarily that many lands. We've just had a lot of uh, slow stumbly starts with this list. I don't like it as much, I think, as the uh, mid-range version, which the primer was written about. But if you do want to see gameplay of that list, you can check all the links uh, that I put at the bottom of the primer. So there's tons of information you can get on that. Tons and tons and tons. Okay, they got the field. I guess... I guess engineered explosives is just, or I'm uh, not engineered explosives. I guess bridge is just not on their radar at all. Um, that is, that's fine. We're just going to play the bridge, keep the one card in hand. All of their things that want to attack are, um, are bigger than that. Again, one of the big problems we're going to have is uh, just trying to win this game on clock. This game, this, the other deck had problems with it. This one seems to have even more problems with it, so... This is going to be the guy Ruta that they put in their hand earlier. So they want to flip another Titan here. They flipped nothing on their side and nothing on my side. No, they flipped another Guy Ruda. And they flip nothing on their side and nothing on my side. No, they flipped Nerza. Yikes.
On the plus side, we're, we might be clocking them. Yeah, you can keep putting as many zombies as you wanted to play. I'm A-OK -okay with this. I made their field. Kill their field. Uh, Mox Amber taps for two, which is sweet. You're up. Well, for some reason, they're just burning all their clock. I wonder if they're trying to figure out if they just want to activate Urza. It does work. Yep. Yeah. OK. Now they have to make a choice of creature type, which is going to take time for them. So it is possible we're going to win this on clock, which again kind of sucks, but hey, <laughs> I'll take it. After, after the way some of this league has been to us, we're we're gonna take we're gonna take the win we can get. I don't need that anymore. We're just gonna put them in a little shrinking world here. Bajuka bog. Oh that's so rude. My Udo! And if they draw a blast zone, we just get to kill it. That's kind of sick. Sure. Sick. Uh, they did not. Oh, they didn't play it because they couldn't play it. Got it. Obviously, I could have grabbed something from my wish board, but I'm just not interested in wasting the time. <laughs> Unfortunately, the way I'm planning on winning this game right now is that they are just never going to hit a way to beat my bridge. Yeah. Ha! They played a land, and then they got the blast zone. No, no. No, they didn't. But it doesn't matter, because they don't have the mana to activate, so I'm just going to kill it with Karn. Fortunately, I drew yet another card, which I'm just going to have to play. It's taxing. But we've gained a chunk of clock on them. The problem is I don't think it'll be enough. It's possible they concede now that they lost their blast zone. We'll see. I wonder if they're playing more than one. They probably are. Slaughter games. Go nuts. This is going to take them some time, which is good for us. So we're playing the timeout. If anyone in the chat hates me playing the timeout, let me know now. As for me, it's been a rough day, and I need the win, so I'm going to go for it as much as I can. If we don't get it, don't worry about it. It's not a big problem. They are playing it. Good for them. They should take Song of Creation here, if they can remember the name of it. Hmm. 
I'm really excited. What are they going to pick? Could be anything. Could even be a boat. And by boat, I mean Sky Sovereign. And by Sky Sovereign, I mean... Uro. Okay. Bold choice, friend. We spent like an entire minute of clock doing that. Play this. Coding cavern. Code cavern. Camping spear, sure. They figured it out. All right. Might be dead now, because we keep drawing things like that that require more inputs. Ugh, freaking damping sphere. Yeah, we're just dead on clock. Well, we knew we were going to be, as long as they played at a reasonable pace. For some reason, they decided to slaughter games me and spend an entire minute doing that and give me some modicum of hope here, but... Oh, they're casting something. I don't think they could possibly screw this up enough times for me to win, but maybe. Okay. Damn it. You know, sometimes the Moto interface, just, just the laggy worst. All right, so we're at O2. All right, I'm going to give this one more match for tonight, if only because I just want to see if we can get a win. We went 1-4 in the first league. They conceded. They gave me the win. All right. Well, that... Good on you, opponent. That was, that was a noble thing that happened there. So, big applause for our opponent, uh, Mash Malovsky. Seriously, we we kind of needed that one tonight, so that was big game. Good for them. Good for me. Kind of. I don't know. The sour taste. It's not been the most uh, upbeat evening for the Mana Symbol channel, but hey. Can't all be perfect. All right, so we got Turn 1 Goose, Ornithopter, Mox Amber, Noctis Revival. We are on the play I only need one something to get us to this Urza all right we're gonna keep this it's potentially sketchy but we'll see so we get green and then we can get blue I did that wrong we we're supposed to use the Vista to get green and then the the Misty Rainforest could get blue red so we're going to get a uh, breeding pool with this. And then the Vista can fill in the other color in case we draw red and six or Kinnon. So the, the thing that you need to prepare for in this deck is on turn two, you could be playing red and six or Kinnon. And both of them have different color requirements. That said, this, is, this hand is a perfect setup for the turn two Kinnon into Urza if we draw the Kinnon. You have no... We have no expectation of doing so, but it is possible. <sighs> What's going on there, Pona? What do you got? Anything exciting going on in your world, friend? Thank you. 
There we go. So, yeah, we want green blue. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Nothing. I'll take it. Wista? Okay. I suppose I could Noxious Revival the fetch land on top of my library to ensure I get Urza next turn. And then just explode out with Thopter and Mox Amber. Jiggy, Jiggy mentioned that line at some point, and I was like, God, that sounds awful, but I, I think that might be what we're doing. Opponent is way in the tank about all of these turns. Blighted agent, you say. Very well. So against Infect, we don't have any problem burning off this um, Noxious Revival for, for life. Um, and we'll create the food token to have more mana next turn. So unfortunately, reset Misty Rainforest by pinging ourselves. And then hopefully they don't just have the nuts and kill us. So while all these blockers would be great against many of the draws that Infect can put out, this is not one of them. Uh, we'll put Orion in our hand here. One of the things that uh, we, or I quickly identified after so if they just have the nuts, we're dead. One one of the things I quickly identified after the uh, yeah we're just dead, huh? Son of, a, son of a doodle. One of the things I quickly identified after the companion change was that Urian is still just as powerful as it was before, with the caveat that you want to be playing a deck that generates a lot of mana, which is something that Urza does exceptionally well. Um, man, we have no sideboard for this. Uh, Unless we're worried about spell pierces and things like that, but need a more Ren and Six sort of focus draw, let's say. Thanks for the follow there, Tio Lao. Uh, we are not having the best evening here playing this uh, deck from my good friend Jiggy Wiggy. We're on 1 2 in this league, and. No, we're 1 1 in this league. Uh, and the previous one was a 1-4 meltdown. We just got smashed a bunch of times. Uh, and other games were just really awkward. But hopefully we can get something going with this one. Jesus. Alright. Like the best hand we've had all game. This is turn 2, Ran 6. Yeah, this is really good. So we go Springleaf on one. Oh, we could even play Uro in two if we wanted to. But we Springleaf on one and then Thopter into Ren and Six on two. Uh, 
is good. Pyrex good. We get to pick that off with Renin Six. That's an insane draw. So green, red. Yeah, if I had another land in my hand somehow, we could uh, also Uro this turn, but that is not the case. Still, great position for next turn. And generally for the rest of the game, because Infect has a has a big problem with Brennan 6. I think we have to pick off the hierarch. I wanna I wanna go for I wanna go for the land here, but um, Play the arrow first, stack my triggers like that, see what we hit here. Stomping grounds, sure. We only had two mana available, so we wouldn't be able to get um, Urian with that. And then we'll be able to pop that off on their turn. So hopefully we can find Song of Creation or something similar and then start going nuts. Song of Creation, Urza, Karn, all these things will end the game very quickly at this point. Third... Hierarch. I don't want to lose this Ren in six, so hopefully we can draw something good here. Dismember on top. Good to know. I might truffle it away. We'll see. Karn is great. So I can Astrolabe and then play Karn because I don't think there's anything on one mana that I want here. And then we get Walking Bliss the next turn if we want it. No, sorry, that's not the order in which I said I was going to do things. Astrolabe. Second Ren and Six is great. So we could just go ping, play second Ren and Six, pick up a land, play the land. It doesn't matter in which order I do that. So I have one, two, three. Yeah, I didn't play land yet. So... One, two, three, four, and then the fifth one that we're going to pick up. So we can play Ren and Six and get our Urian. Cool. Then we have more mana next turn for when we're going to get the Karn. Oh, uh, we, we should have pinged with the one. Okay, so I was I was like, it doesn't matter which order we use those Ren and Six activations, but it did. So we should have used the one in play for the ping. And then, okay, so they just shoveled away the Dismember. That's okay for us. Uh, oh, they might protect their Hierarch. Okay, that's good, because they're, they're wasting a protection spell. Wasting a protection spell on it. Um, so I, I was thinking that it didn't matter in which order we did that, but it actually did. Um, we are exposing our Renin 6 to getting beat down by this Hierarch, and Renin 6 should be at 4 loyalty if I had sequenced it correctly, just like I was talking about, but them not being able to get a creature in that can attack this turn is... Okay, well, there's our Renin 6 dying. So if they also have Glistener Elf, this is pretty bad. So my Punt is punished. We'll see how far it goes. Okay. They shuffled away the Dismember. They were going to draw. That doesn't necessarily mean they don't have another one. But I can play Urza and Karn. So that seems good. Could play Urian instead. So even if they kill my Urza now, I get a lot of value out of this. Uh, not that much, but I think it's going to resolve. Cool. Whee! 
deck is sweet. Let's put that thing into play. Let's draw a card. Let's fucking get them. All right, they get to attack for two, two unblockable damage if they want. I'm at 21. They got four cards to try to kill me with. They didn't. They didn't cast it. They cast it on my Urza. Why? All right. So now we're just gonna Karn for uh, Walking Blista and then just take them apart. That's hilarious. Okay, so we can Ballista X3 here, which should be unbeatable for them. They only have one mana available, so we'll just pick off their uh, Blighted Agent, and then should be all she wrote. Uh, the Astrolabe is mana neutral with uh, Urza in play, so we'll play that first. Yeah, they conceded. It is really hard for them to beat Ren and Six into this situation. Ren and Six is basically the thing that, that just makes the game very difficult for them. So let's just try to hit a crazy go bananas draw on the last one. Yikes. Yeah, we're not keeping this one. They get to keep their seven. That's not great. Ah, oh, man. Man, we've gone to so many fives with this deck. It's brutal. I have to gotta toss the song. Yeah. Alright. Good turn to Emery, so let's hope that their hand isn't blazingly fast again. Yeah, I have a blocker. And even if my blocker dies, uh, I still get the turn to Emery. And I have a second goose, so that's actually one of the best possible draws was another goose. So we get forest and then we get scalding turn? Yeah, that's gonna work fine. Pendlehaven, that's a pain in the butt. Oh no. Okay. Well, this could be bad. They're leaving up the Pendlehaven to protect the Glisten Elf from a potential Ren and Six, I would guess. Pretty sure. Yeah, we're just playing Goose and Emery here. We just got to pray. Because unfortunately, they ha they're they playing Distortion Strike, which is like not super common for Infect these days, I think, but they, they hit the right meta call, and we'll see if it causes me to die. Okay, so this is for three, and a plus four plus four will make it seven, so we're almost dead. We're going to nine, in fact, assuming they have a plus four plus four. If they have scale up, we're just dead, and if they have two pump spells, we're also dead. Got four cards in hand, so it's almost definite. Karn, Karn, not enough. I was literally sitting here going like, what if I draw Kinnon? The problem with Kinnon on this hand is that he doesn't cost me any mana. But he doesn't get me anything here. On the flip side, this is no longer unblockable. 
So unless they have specifically another uh, distortion strike, we might be okay. What is this? Okay, well that's a yikes. Was was not expecting that. So. Oh, because they were expecting Uro. Are we blocking with Emery here? Man, that sucks, but I think we're blocking with Emery here. Because they got the Pendlehaven, and I can't afford to go down on mana. Yeah. yeah. They need to have another Mystical Dispute to beat Uro, but there's a good chance they do. Because it's good against Uro and Urza. Okay, that doesn't beat that just that doesn't beat just blockers. Just blocking them is a reasonable choice. Now let's try to play the arrow. I think that's <laughs> the food tokens exist in my graveyard due to state-based actions. That's hilarious. Thank you, MTGO. Always technically correct. No mystical dispute. Thank God. Okay, maybe we're going to get there on this one. We do have Karn coming up. So Karn is going to be able to turn off their spell skite. It's actually a really good thing we blocked with Emery and not one of these geese. All right, let's see what they drew. I'm pretty sure we just block with Uro. Actually, do we? Because if they have enough pump spells, I would rather draw the card with Uro, and I've got two useless geese to block with next turn. Useless. I only need one of them. Okay, that's fine. Bye, little Thopter. You were a good doctor, you were. But you did now. Yikes. Okay. Good draw. Not a great draw. But, all right, let's see what we pick up with this. get any color I want. Uh, let's get blue, because we've got the Astrolabe to filter this to green. Uh, it doesn't matter what else I play, so if we're going to attack with Uro, let's do it now. Noxious Revival. Well, that's not the best right now, considering my graveyard is pretty cleared out. I cleared out things like Urza and Kinnon that would have been useful. So getting used to playing a list that has Noxious Revival in it, definitely an adjustment. <laughs> so we're going to have to block both the Glistener Elves, I think. It's kind of a pain in the butt, uh, but they'll actually have to spend a pump spell to get through it. So they can use Pendlehaven on one, but they they have to use a pump spell to get through the other one. We'll see if they choose to. They might not. They might just sandbag it. Nope, they used it. All right, that's good. So do I want to reset a goose? Kind of. And then Karn gets me nothing the turn it arrives. Oh, I can give me an Ornithopter, actually. Ha, huh, that's funny. 
What is up, Pogo Shark? We got a huge number of viewers in here a little bit earlier. We're still doing all right. Do I want one of these geese? I think we're okay with that. Because we could just naturally draw. Yeah, let's just see what we pick up. That was a phenomenal draw. Cool. So one, two, three, four. Karen. Spell Skite go off now. No. No. I can pay for that. I can pay for that. And then we get an Ornithopter anyway, so we have two blockers, which is what we need. Yay, Kinnon. The littlest Bond of Prodigies doing good work. With the pieces. Of I don't think you have the pieces for this deck, my friend. This This is different than what we were playing before. This is different and more insane. And for some reason I had an ornithopter in my sideboard. Actually, it, it does make sense that I had an ornithopter in my sideboard, but it is funny as well. Okay, I've got two cards in hand. They have to use one to get through my thopter and or my Uro. And then it looks like we've stabilized nicely here. As long as my Kinnon doesn't die, I have a bunch of mana next turn to play a Thopter. Oh, you're gonna... Scale up. Sure. No problem, Mirror Bear. Oh, sleep tight. Sure. You're going to make my Uro into a 4-4. Two, a four, four. Oh, maybe they also have the, uh, the plus 4, plus 4? Yeah. Okay, so they got through everything I have. And then we're going to play Walking Ballista and just eat their board. So, should be all right here. So two, three, four, five, six. Should have left the green open for the Noxious Revival, but it's not going to matter, I don't think. Let's go ping. So Karn, the weirdest, weirdest decks Karn helps you defeat, and uh, Infect is one of them. What's the record so far? Well, the previously was a 1-4 Meltdown. This one's a 1-1 one -one so far. We're uh we're we're trying here. This deck has been rough. The the one four had three two ones. We just beat Infect, so that was good. They only got game one on us, and we managed to uh, present enough blockers, and they had enough okay hands. This definitely doesn't feel as good as the uh, as as the one we um, as the one we wrote the primer on. Speaking of which. Um, I know I keep plugging it. I'm going to keep plugging it. Um, I don't know if you saw this yet, Pogo. This is the primer that got posted today by me and Jiggy Wiggy on Reddit. So check it out. Give it an upvote if you like it. The rec decks feel meh against Mono Redge, Dredge. Mono Red and Dredge, and strong against other decks. Well, that's true of, like, any Cryptic Command deck, though. Like, whether they have, like, a good proactive uh, mid-to-late game or not. So we're against Kentaro Hakori. And we are on the draw. Uh, yeah, this is a good opening. Mid-range decks feel super easy to beat with it. Yep, they should do. So 
So the uh, it sort of falls into the the uh, sort of conventional magic wisdom of uh, you either want to be way faster than your opponent or a little bit bigger. That's um, sort of the having the deck advantage is either being way faster than your opponent or just a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm really hoping what they have here is Ice Fang Quaddle. Not Remand or Mana Link. Good. We play a slightly mediocre Thassa's Oracle, but next turn we have Urza or Karn. Or Uro, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I'm I'm in the market for another drum. Sure. Wow. Nuts. I don't know if you've played against the Bant Spirits deck, but it's a misery for Cryptic decks. Yeah, I have. Uh, I have a Nemesis in person, and he uh, he plays Bant Spirits in Pioneer, and he's played it in uh, Modern a bunch, and I just... Ugh. <laughs> if, if anyone plays in paper, you you know that feeling of that person you just hate losing to? That that person plays spirits. So one, two, three, four, five, six mana. So the question is against their obviously open mana. Hmm. I want to get a red here. It just doesn't make any sense right now. So I play Uro, if I whip, yeah, we're, so we're just, we're just going to play Karn. If I attack, we're not going to attack, at least not right away. Play Karn, Karn seems like the least impressive of my cards. Resolves, eh? I have two mana, let's go get the coding. Modern is snow covered. We tried out the triumph. We haven't tried out the triumph. The the one thing that's holding me back from even wanting to try the triumph is the fact that these decks really suffer from hitting a tap land. It's not a control deck. This this deck needs to be playing out its mana pretty proactively. Wow, that's crazy that that resolved. I don't know what they're doing over there, but okay. They must have Snapcaster or something here. No, this is field. Yeah, that was that was field activation, hundred percent. What I prefer they don't have white. Do most people run out of play points? It seems a lot of streamers have billions of them. Uh, it, it it depends on um, how often you play good decks and what you do with your chests slash your um yeah as far as trying to squeeze one in for the Ren6 draw engine maybe waterlog grove waterlog grove is absolutely better uh, i've played multiple other decks that were slightly kind of proactive about their mana where where waterlog grove is 100 percent where you want it to be okay i'm gonna take them off white i think if they have cryptic it's kind of a pain in the ass See ya. Okay. Um, cast my bobble. We'll just go second main phase. I don't need to do anything here. We can play Uro into Urza. So we're going to do that. All right. What do we got? Emery? Well, that's just phenomenal. Unfortunately, I don't have the mana for everything, but I'd rather play Emery, I think. Do 
because they must hit a counter spell at some point, right? I'm wondering if they have like multiple ice fan coils in their hand. I don't know what's happening on their side, but maybe they're trying to get to Supreme Verdict, but we're just going to keep them locked off of their white as much as possible, and Astrolabe won't help them. They scooped. Okay. Game one win against some kind of control deck. So let's grab some Veils. Uh, let's kick out a Thopter. And uh, Narsa is really good in this matchup. Uh, maybe just an Uro. And no, Uro is good to grind against them. Echo? No. Red and six, maybe? It's not a removal spell here. Yeah, let's let's take out the Ransex. All right, see you, Pensier. Have a good one. Uh, can I keep this hand? Probably not. We're on the draw. It's a close one. I'm going to ship it. That's much better. Can't cast this Ren and Six, so I probably have to ship that. All right. See how quickly we get punished for that, but. We get stomping grounds here that gets me to Kinnon. There was no combination of lands that would get me to Ren and Six, but that one does it now in theory. If they have a counter, they're going to blow it on Kinnon, I would think. Nope. I don't. They must be playing some like counter light version of Bant, which is strange. I don't know if someone performed well with a Bant deck that has like almost no counters or something, but maybe they just don't consider Kinnon a threat, which is funny. Obviously with this hand, we can see that it's not, but. What do you got, Nerd? Uh oh. Okay. 
Well, that's a good draw. So let's attack with Kinnon. They could have Snapcaster. I've had an opponent do that before. So they got a Snowland. They have uh, Ice Fang and the second Ice Fang, but Ice Fang has to count three other permanents. So yeah, that's not good enough. And we'll play Emery here for full retail. Next turn we get to play Narset with Veil backup, which is kind of sick. They let it result. They must have verdict this game. I'm I'm like locked in on they have verdict. Maybe they didn't have any in their main deck. That's a yikes. Yep. Oof. Jeez. All gas, pretty much. Although our deck does have a very high gas density. All right, so they got to have force for my Narset. So if I attack Ashok with Emery, they can they can block with an Ice Fang, but their other Ice Fang will now lose Death Touch, assuming they don't have another Snow Covered Land. Ashiok's such a savage card. Miss having Ashiok in the deck. Ashiok is in the uh, fair quote unquote version of this deck. So they gotta have force here. Or we're we're gonna be in a pretty okay spot. Well that's good. Don't whiff. Don't whiff. Don't whiff. Almost. Okay. So two songs. Kinnon Urza. Two cannons. Two songs, two cannons. Yikes. I've got my other cannon in I've got a cannon in play at least, but if they path my cannon, I'm down to one in the whole deck. Which is not great. If they have Jacer to ferry here, I'm basically dead. Good draw. Not a great draw, but a good draw. Okay, our Ren and Six setup is kind of biting us in the in the butt here. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Jeez. Another song goes. 
And I can't activate my Narset. I guess I can just play out another useless special hand. Useless. So our mana development is just getting slammed by this Ashiok. Okay, we are allowed to search for this uh, because they control the Ashiok. So we'll get a forest. The Astrolabe is worth extra mana, so I can actually play the Karn next turn, but I need one more mana to be able to play this Veil of Summer, which I really would like to be able to do. Jeez. All right, we've lost almost 20 cards. Noxious Revival. I haven't lost the thought. Fast's Oracle. We've lost three songs. All right, it's going to make it really hard to song out of this situation, but didn't seem like that was super likely so so we're gonna veil in response to this we get to draw a card and teferi won't be able to bounce any of our permanents not perfect but veil is basically our only instant anyway so Okay, Springleaf. Plays for one mana, taps for two mana. But unfortunately, it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to have to try to play Urza. Hopefully they somehow don't, just don't have any counters whatsoever. They must have something that they've been sitting on. Yeah, there it is. Okay, um... If I activate Narset, they'll be incentivized to attack with the Ice Fang. It just doesn't work in the order I want it to, basically, so... There, Teferi's gonna be able to mess with us nicely. We do get to keep the Narset, so if they want to bounce on them, they don't get to draw the extra card. So that's something. Maybe they'll just plus the Teferi. Maybe, maybe. What do you got, nerd? So maybe they want to instant speed verdict on my turn if they need to. Well, they can't brainstorm, so that's nice. If they do, it'll be hilarious. They got a Fate Seal. Or Boomerang. Okay. Resolve, please. <laughs> Don't mana leak me. Oh, nice. Okay. My snow mana on my snow card. Got my snow nails done. Okay, play spring leaf drop. That. That could be a whole thing.
think tech Jace, because then that means they boomerang, they lose the Jace. Huh. Well, yeah, we might be able to take this one. They've got an absolutely insane setup, but just a little bit more and we get through it. So let's see. This Narset's doing work. Just keeping their draws on lock. What do you get? What do you get? What do you get? Slow Bant players. Got some slow Bant players. Bait sealing me. Yep. Okay, Narset's in the in the danger zone. We lost uh, one Urza. So, <sighs> would you stop bouncing my Kinnon? At least they didn't get to draw a card. Um, so sorry, one Urza, two Urza. So we're not out of Urzas. Hopefully this Kinnon resolves. Yeah, so if we resolve Kinnon into Song here, we could kind of go a little nuts, but it's like zero percent chance, right? So red, red, blue, blue, green, green, Song resolves. Resolves. Damn it. It'd be like a nice fan quaddle. <sighs> if I put it on top, they just Ashiok mill me. Then they're gonna... Yeah, we're done here. All right. Finally cracked through my Narset that was holding them back. Yikes. All right. I'm cutting the other Noxious Revival. I really want to go as low on Noxious Revivals as I can. I really don't like the card. I also don't like the Echo Vions, personally. Jiggy's all about them, but I don't know about these cards. The Ornithopter seemed good, but Noxious Revival is just so bad on its own. I think I do want the four Ren and six on the sideboard of games here, though, because Ren and six plus Veil of Summer can be super gross.
All right, let's do it. There's my noodle. Yeah, this is okay. Just have to not be facing down on turn three, Ashiok. Which is unlikely since we're on the play and they have no acceleration. But. So we're going to get, um, as I was mentioning before, we're going to get Forest into Scalding Tarn, which covers all our bases. But more importantly, so it, gives us, if it gives us both a snow, a snow land and... Uh, and then all of our colors. What do you get? What do you get? What do you get? Beep, 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 beep. Yep. Big draw. That's a pretty big draw. Nice to be on the play. That is fantastic. I think that means I can even play through a um, mystical dispute. Yeah, we can. That's crazy. So first we're going to play Arkham's Astrolabe with Kinnon and play Arkham's Astrolabe as mana neutral. Sorry. Play the Mox Amber. Urza. What do you got? Only Remand stops me, and your deck doesn't normally play Remand. Triggers. Woo! Let's grab Urion. I don't think I'm attacking with Kinnon, because if they have an Ice Fang, they can block. I would not like to lose, lose my Kinnon like that. If they have a Verdict here... Hey, look, they have the thing I said they had. Um, if they have a Verdict coming in, that's going to be a little rough, because I don't want to play my Urion into it. So we don't have a plan for next turn, and this has Death Touch, which means my beatdown is pretty diffused. That's one of the best possible draws here. Luckily, Uro is real good in situations like this. We just go tearing ahead. That didn't. All right, should have put that in play, but that's fine. Okay, we're going to attack with the construct. And our other play this turn is. Took it. That's crazy. Um, I think we're just going to spin Urza. So I just 
don't. Thank you, Graga5, for the follow there. We're gonna spin ours to see what we hit here. Okay, Mox Hammer is fine. This means we have enough mana to make a um, food with Goose, so. So we're gonna retain a lot of value through a verdict here if we have to run into a verdict. Graga5, and actually everyone who's been popping on through here, uh, I post most all of my things to YouTube and you can click the links below to get uh, easily to that as well as a bunch of the other stuff that I'm up to. Um, Simpsons memes on my imager um, as well as my Twitter and I'm not sure what else is down there, but there's there's buttons for all of it. Nothing, eh? So this is going to be cryptic command. So probably going to be spinning up Urza pre-combat and then leaving enough mana for this song. Song into Uro, maybe. So let's tap Kinnon. I didn't make a food, did I? I missed it. Spin Urza. If we hit something that we exile, yeah, we could play that until end of turn, but we don't have to play it now. So we'll try to go to combat. If they want a cryptic to tap me down, they can. They choose not to. Downside of playing Song of Creation right now is I would end up having to discard my own hand. So let's let's play Fast Oracle and set up the next five cards on top. Seems good. Uh, I think I like a Redundant Urza. Redundant Urza seems good. I guess I could just spin again. No, I don't want to do that because I just set up the top. Yeah, we'll just pass the turn and try to remember to make a food this time. Ghost X02 is raiding. I don't even know who Ghost X02 is, but you seem awesome, you human. Run, Thank you so much. You We're still playing this absolutely bonkers deck here. We just uh, lost the redundant Urza that I shipped to the top with my Thassa's Oracle, but we're trying to combo off. Well, I know you're you. What's up, Blitz MTG? You are good human. Ghost is cool, I believe you. It is Ooh, getting some more follows. This has been an absolutely wild night, even though we've been playing like garbage. We're putting the absolute smackdown on this Bant player. Um, and they're really trying to squeeze out of this. Teferi is not going to do it. But God bless you for trying. Good lord, we are getting all the follows here. Well, thank you so much, folks. I am Canadian. We've been having the America-Canada debate. Oh, no. Try to stay out of the geopolitics over here. Good God, we're on that crazy follow train. I'm glad I have some variety in my follows, uh, follow commands, although... Um, I was thinking about adding more, and now I'm really incentivized to do it. Compadres, it is imperative that we crush the Freedom Fighters before the start of the rainy season. And remember, Basically, Canadian live 30 minutes from the board. Yay, yeah, 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 honorary Canadian. The head of Colonel Montoya. Good God. Wow! So I think we're going to crack 200 followers in a second here, which is just, just phenomenal. I've had an incredible week of... My content getting plugged in different places and all sorts of things like that. So, this is sweet. Um, not presenting lethal here, but we'll let them choose what they want to keep in play. Teferi is definitely not. Um, we did burn their White House. That is history fact. All right, so blue, blue. Blue, blue. What about an Urza? What do you What do you say? Okay. I think we're just gonna leave it there again because if if they do finally hit a verdict, um, we're gonna be able to rebuild instantaneously with song creation. Basically, we should be able to do so. 
Yeah, they just scooped out. Nice. Not enough Impractical Jokers. That's true. I don't know what Impractical Jokers is. A whole bunch of people from Ashiok's channel have talked about it, but I don't have any idea. We're somehow 3-1 and one in this league, so we're going to play the last one out to a wonderful crowd of people. Thank you so much for all of the people knocked in. Wait, how do I have more followers than you, Ashi Ashiok? I, I don't know. Maybe you shitpost more? It's an awful crowd. Awful, awful man. Except the guys who were already here. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Juzum is kind of a dick. Well, I don't mind. Yeah, actually, I've been doing it for six months. Um, and I've been on a podcast, and the people of that podcast, the Faithless Brewing guys, they did a show with Wizards. So, I don't know what to tell you. I'm, I'm hacking it out down here. I'm old and washed up, and it's going to be fine. But if you want to fix that... Y'all can keep hitting me with those follows, anyone who in here who is in here who hasn't. And again, my YouTube stuff at the bottom is linked here. Uh, we just wrote a primer that you can get here on Reddit all about the deck. You've seen me even before you started. Wow. Well, I... I... It's all good. Sadness goes on the stack, doesn't know how he got here. Thanks, Peasy. You're great. following since may good for you well i try to be a force of positivity and i've been uh just doing stuff yeah man well you're tearing it up with etron all the time in those uh in those competitive queues where i'm i'm like the the canadian knockoff jeff hoogland with the uh with the way that i'm just like playing a bunch of garbage that i think people will be interested in seeing and not particularly well at that I mean, I try to play it well, <laughs> but so I, I look for some pretty crazy decks. Don't ever compare yourself to Jeff. I mean, he's huge, so he's so gross. Well, oh yeah, Blitz, you're great. Well, that that deck was cool. Like, I didn't, I didn't know who you were. I just saw the deck and I was like, that deck is neat. I bet people would want to see it on YouTube. Uh, aspiring spikes turnaround time on his stuff is so slow okay i think we're gonna have to mulligan this one especially in the dark they mult to six so i feel better about it you all hate hoogland well i certainly haven't been that big of a fan of him in the last little while i used to be a big fan of him um, less so recently, but I still like him. Can we continue to flirt? Oh yeah, for sure. As much as you want. I mean, uh, as much as you want. Gotta give you those bedroom eyes. get a room i have a room i'm in a room right now no one else is in this room with me all right that that was a tad unfortunate it's okay we got we got nothing but good draws in our deck it's gonna be fine our hand is not entirely developed or enti entirely dependent on that at all we do have this sweet setup of um spring leaf drum and mox amber with uro so this was something that we discovered while playing um so this can get, okay, so I can get a forest with this. So this is something we discovered while playing the other deck, which is that um, if you have Uro um, with a Springleaf Drum and a Mox Amber, Uro is able to pay for half of his ability to come back out again. Or if you have a Kinnon, he's, he's able to pay entirely for himself to come back again. I got timed out when I made a Pyramid in his chat. Hey, Pyramids are acceptable. Pyramids are great. I have one emote. Um, super genius. S O O P E R. Use it uh, if you have it. Use it whenever I make a stupid play, or our opponent makes a stupid play. We are referencing Wild E Coyote. 
Does this stream support ASCII? I do not think so. When Crokies is a prick to chat, it's funny. <laughs> People always interrupting the pyramids. When Hoogland does it, it sounds so mean. Well, I don't know, to each their own. Holy jumping. That is a lot of flavor text. So it looks like we're against classic uh, rock. Whoa, 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 Brett, chill out with the chill out with the flavor text and Ashiok. That's uh, that's too much chatter in the chat. All right, is this Liliana? Whoa, 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 we're not banning anyone. I'm just... It's just going to be hard to uh, follow chat if it's like that all the time. So I played the wrong fetch land here. We're obviously in a bit of a rough spot thanks to their early disruption, but let's see if we can pick up something good here. Not great, but certainly moving in a better direction. Uro is going to give us another shot at something. We'll have three mana uh, after the Uro resolve, so we'll be able to pick up our Orion out of our sideboard. I don't want to take extra damage here. We don't have access to red yet, but when we have the Scalding Tar, we will. And Papa, no. Papa, can you hear me? All right, something sweet. Goose! Fine, I guess that's sweet. Um, would I rather... Get the Uriah. No, getting Uriah in my hand is not a big deal right now. Okay, so that dies. I'm going to play. Yep, yep. We can and we did. Yeah, it's an alright combo. It's even more insane with Kinnon. So, as I was mentioning earlier, Mox Amber plus Springleaf Drum, you play the Uro and then you tap him for two mana and you tap the Mox Amber for two mana with Kinnon in play. It's insane. Of course, you already had the Kinnon in play, but these Dark Confidants are... Ooh, Fatal Push. Okay. We do have Uro coming in next turn, so hopefully they blow the push on my Goose. Uh, they have a Tarmogoyf coming out, which is going to be somewhat hefty, but at the same time, we're going to clear out our graveyard a little bit, so we can hopefully shave down the size of their, their Tarmogoofy. Magoose! Magoose! You have killed Magoose! What can I say? Scoose. Oh, fuck. Good God. The timing. Is the Black Green Rock fun, police? Okay, um, so I've been in this exact situation before against essentially this exact deck. So we're just going to play this on Creation and Pray here. Um, this is not the exact same deck I was playing when I when I won out with Song of Creation in this situation, but we are going to attempt to just blow my opponent away next turn. So let's see if it works out. It did in the challenge. I was playing literally against Black Green Rock in round one or two, and it looked like we were completely locked to lose, and then we ripped Song of Creation, and then this happened. So, Liliana Waker of the Dead? Is that the new one? Are they playing the budget Liliana the Veil? It's the new one. Yeah, so each player discards a card. Each player who can't loses three lives. So we're going to take seven, eight, nine, ten, possibly eleven. So we're not going to die. It's going to be damn close. They discard Dark Confidant, sure. Budget Angrath. Yeah, I guess it's like Budget Angrath. Okay, we're going to. Four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to two. Okay, so we need to draw a spell, basically. 
Uh, if we draw any spell, we should be able to go off pretty hard. I say any spell as soon as we, as soon as we draw something, it's going to be obviously not. Nope. All right. Well, we're going to take ourselves out. That's the only way to do this. All right. Oh. Oh my god, we would have gone off so hard. All right, it's fine. They had the turn one discard after we mulligan, so that's how those matches go sometimes. Toss the Thopter, toss the Narset. Bob dodges Narset, so not particularly useful there, and I think we're good to go. Going to go play a game of Valorant win for me. That's the plan. Hope Valorant is fun. I used to play some FPS, uh, but I haven't played in a long time. Got called out for playing Hearthstone once. I used to play Hearthstone before there was MTG Arena while I was in university and I didn't have any money. So, like, I played Hearthstone because it had free to play. Um, and I didn't realize that I was good enough to, like, go infinite on, on Magic Online. Was bored and wanted to play Battlegrounds. Hey, man, Hearthstone is a fun game. I don't think it's as good as Magic as a game, but that doesn't mean it's not fun. It's, uh, it's fun to do something different, too. So are we playing turn one Goose and just assuming they're not going to have discard? I don't think so. I think I'm going to play Bobble, and I think on their turn, if they don't turn one discard me, we're going to Bobble ourselves and try to control our draw. He told me my deck wasn't good while he was playing Red Green Tron and Garuda combo. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Filthy. Just, just filthy. Listen folks, don't play Jund or Black Green if you want value. You gotta have blue. Okay, we're going to leave this Mistress Bobble. I don't need to draw anything right now. If we had drawn an Emery, we would be able to power her out there. We didn't, of course, but that's fine. Get a food. Red, green, Tron, and Gairuda combo. Jesus. I remember when Pleasant Kenobi posted the video about, uh, was it Mon Mono Red Tron? And I was just kind of hacked off because I just, for some reason, Pleasant Kenobi just rubs me the wrong way. And so I was like, this isn't even mono red. What the hell? I still don't like Pleasant Kenobi. And I really couldn't tell you why. I do agree with him on Fetchland, so I'm glad. It's his voice. I love his voice. I love his voice. It's great. You can't stand it. I mean, that's fine. I'm sure there's people out there who can't stand my voice. I haven't met anyone yet, but I'm sure they exist. Okay, so... I'm pretty tempted to play this Uro, even though they're going to eat it. Just to get my mana going a little bit better. Because it just pulls us really far ahead. Um, and if I want to play this Goose, I just set myself up so I have to shock. Because I'm a bad player and I was talking to chat. But... What we should have done is played one of the fetch lands here to get a blue, yeah, to get an island, and then play the Uro, and then use this Vista to get a forest. Cherry's voice. I don't know Cherry. Oh, uh, Cherry Axeman? I know he's not Cherry Axe Man, but he's Cherry Axe Man. I could play Ren and Six and pick up one of these lands. That doesn't really help me. Is playing the Goose just better? Probably. Okay, our mana's really set up here. 
and we forced them basically to have to use the scoops to eat my Uro this turn. I mean, obviously they can do that and then just like play a Tarmogoyf or a Dark Confidant or something of that nature, but I'm glad I'm pushing them around a little bit. Hopefully they don't also have specifically like Thoughtsies. Inquisition's fine. I can take my Ren and Six, but I really want this Karn. So I'm going to have seven mana. Seven mana gets me Bridge, which buys time. Although I don't know if I want to crack both my foods for a bridge. So left two mana open probably means they have abrupt decay. So they have the mana to eat whatever I target with Ren and Six in response. So let's play Ren and Six first. And then I only have to crack one food to play the Karn. And then I can use the other goose to defend my planeswalkers. Beans, why not some sort of brass based pun? I like coffee. I've got Mr. Burns with the coffee cup as like the channel logo, so. I guess they could be notes from uh, notes from um, Banjo-Kazooie as well. That'd be nicely like gaming related to Karn. Okay. Um, actually, you know what we're gonna get? We're gonna get the freaking boat. Get to the chopper. Which means we're not blocking the scoos because then they can eat my goose. We'll see. This might be a mistake. We'll see. Yeah, they've got a lot of power right here. But really depends on what's in their hands. So far, they've been... What they played last couple turns were pretty weak, so. Yeah, they're going to attack my Karn, I think. So if I block with Goose, then when I play Sky Sovereign, it won't deal enough damage to kill the Scoos. So the question is, is the next thing I want to wish for all that good? And can Sky Sovereign kill anything else they play? It's probably not killing, it's definitely not killing a Tarmogoyf. I'm pretty sure I'm blocking here. So they can make their scavenging ooze big enough that my Sky Sovereign won't kill it, but if they play something like Bob or Ren 6, Oh, actually, no. With Sky Sovereign and Ren and Six, we can kill the Scoos and force them to spend the one mana. So let's see how this goes. Got to use that big brain. Remember that you can activate your Ren and Six. Hopefully they play the hilariously overcosted four mana Liliana from Core 21 for some reason that they're playing instead of Liliana the Veil. Vale. It's not better, is it? It's literally just worse, right? Like, even if it costs three mana, you'd still play Liliana the Veil over it. Well, that's a yikes. Blitz, Blitz Fog is quality, you know. Really? Okay. It's fine. So we can get Engineered Explosives on two and then kill their Scoos. It's also going to kill my Renin Six, but it's not really a big problem right now, I don't think. 
Uh, I have one, two, three lands that are going to keep untapping. I really don't want to use my goose for that. Freaking choke. All right. Guess I could just get bridge here. Yeah, let's just get bridge here. So if they have a way to kill this, I still have the goose to block with, so. And then next turn I actually do have enough mana to play the Sky Sovereign and pop the scavenging ooze with the Ran Six. Even if they eat the goose that's in the graveyard. It's gotta be abrupt decay. Assassin's Trophy. Close enough. Sure. So now they can attack down my Karn. We're going to let that happen. Yeah, that's fine. Someone pyramided while you were gone. Yeah, yeah, you're not the only one. You're not unique. You're not new here. Are they going to upkeep, kill something? No, okay, good. They can scooze to eat the fetch land that I try to pick up. God, this is... Well, actually, that's fine, because I don't really want to do that anyway. Can we just play Sky Sovereign, shoot... The skews. They gotta eat the goose, and then I'm gonna ping it. Chat's been slipping. Sure. Poke. Get out of here, you little nerd. Get your shit together, chat. Yeah, come on now. Come on now. Alright, so we can get Urian. And we can actually cast it relatively soon, which is crazy. We have escaped from the tyranny of the Scoos, by the way. Which is great. Because I can start fetching non-island lands, of which I have at least two more. I think three? No, I think just two. Do, do I know the deck that I'm playing? Let's let's check it out. So yeah, two forests, yeah, one one mountain. Yeah, there's the Liliana. So are they gonna kill my goose or what? Or are they just gonna ding me for three? Yeah, they're just dinging me for three. That's fair. She does have a lot of loyalty, I guess. She's a reasonable clock, because Liliana of the Veil doesn't do any damage, which is... Hex Drinker on top of them. Okay. But Liliana doesn't have the, um, what am I going to call it? The um, Croxa Claws. So. Play Kinnon, put Uriah in our hand, and then next turn we can cruise Sky Sovereign and smash. Uh, yeah, because she just wants you to discard cards, not uh, non-land cards. So I have a wonderful friend who hasn't been uh, in the chat in a while, my wonderful friend Roy the Boy. And Roy 
is just one of those like hyper intelligent magic players. He's just he just every card that's like ever been printed. He's just like, yeah, I don't I understand that. How do you not like how do people not understand the card? It's just very clear. When you when you play Croxa, they have to discard a card, and then any player who discarded a non land card or didn't takes three damage. It's like wait, wait, sorry. Any player who didn't discard a non land card is the text. Didn't discard a non land card, which means if you discard a land or don't discard a card, you take three damage. But it's just one of those things that like. It's just tricky to get it. This has got to be Maelstrom Pulse, right? On the on the Renin Six. Is there also a trophy? So I knew you, I know you drew a Hex Drinker. That's an insane draw. So we're gonna do that instead of Uriah in this turn, right? No, we'll just play the Uriah. Uriah's better. Uriah gets me a free food. Oops. Oh, I have to use the, yeah. That's fine. Actually, let's let's use the goose, I guess, because the goose is gonna flicker. Okay, sky noodle. Okay, so we will. Well, I don't have to crew the sky shopper now, but we're gonna do that that way. We. Oh no! Oh no! Ah, damn it. What a ludicrous draw. Okay, so we just get to flicker a single Gilded Goose. Their hand is exactly Hex Drinker right now, which will eventually be problematic, but Goose is going to be able to gain me three life per turn. They will make me discard my Uro this turn. I'll just play it next turn, so that's not too bad. No. Okay, good. I was like, there's no way they have another. They're going to have me discard my arrow, which is great. Happy to do that. And then we could probably eat out. No, they have an artifact, so we, we can't remove all the artifacts. What can we remove? They have lands. Uh, planeswalkers, right? But we're going to kill their planeswalker right now. Okay, uh, before we do anything else, actually, just play Uro first, I think. We'll play the drum. So, blue, green, green, blue. Remove bridge with Uro to later recast with Karn. Fair enough. We could also do the same with Sky Sovereign. I don't think there's any card type I can remove all of, so their their goyf is just gonna stay huge. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what we draw here, though. The thing is, we also have Emery's in our deck, so it's not like necessarily um, always the right the right move. Oh, we got their goif down at no, yeah, because we yeah. So I did remove all the planeswalkers from all the graveyards until I killed their Liliana and put a new one in there. So our Uro is gonna get killed here, blocking the goif. Actually, no, they can't get their hex drinker all the way up, right? Because it's on two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they can't get it all the way up, so it's only gonna be a four four this turn at maximum. Yeah, it needs to go to eight. Okay, 
Unless the last thing in their hand is an untapped land. Goes to combat, sure. Attacks with just Tarmogoy? Doesn't attack with anything. Okay, fair enough. So we're definitely going to attack. Because recasting Uro is fine for us. Attacking with both? Yeah, I think so. I want to get the four damage in. Oh, and actually, Ran 6 is going to be able to ping the Tarmogoyf. Hello, friend. Dude. Tap this for blue blue. No, it doesn't tap for blue blue. Shoot. Uh, and I can't, uh, I screwed up and I can't play Uro unless I use my island, but that's okay. We're gonna use the island, I think. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Okay, it's fine. We have one card graveyard. It's a babble. Yeah. That was one of the best possible draws because I can still crack this food if I need to. Because I think there's still, we have Scalding Tarn, we have Breeding Pool. No, we don't have Scalding Tarn. So unless I've ex exiled it. Yeah, we did actually. No, not Scalding Tarn, Steam Vents is what we are looking for. Well, we got through that one. So, game three? Yikes. All right, we're playing for the 4-1 here. So let's keep a good hand and get it. Uh, I'll be back in two seconds, gonna hit the head, and then we're gonna get this 4-1, finish off the night with some glory. So black green is quite, quite the awkward dance in terms of mulligans. Um, we're looking for a pretty powerful explosive hand, but at the same time, we need to uh, make sure that we don't get taken apart by early discard spells. So it's pretty tricky, and they have very good tools in their deck to deal with us. So. Let's see if we can't get this one. That is a terrible opening hand. Yeah, and they kept their seven, of course. This is much better. I think I'm bottoming the drum here. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's a good six. Oh, this must be the this must be the black green deck that's playing main deck Luris, which we didn't see in any either of the other games. Yep. 
So here goes our red and six, I assume. Yep. Echo of the gods. Maybe. So the thing about Echo of Eons, and Jiki has sort of spoken to its efficacy, and I, I'm i still doubtful. But what I will say is what Echo of Aeons, Eons um, rewards you for is, is having the ability to just pop off with a lot of mana. And our deck definitely has that, so... X drinker, okay. Sure. So we're really hoping they don't have um, land and scoos inquisition. Okay. Well. Okay, we got a reasonably nutty turn here. So we get to go Kinnon, crack the food for two mana. Play the drum. Tap the drum for two mana. Play the arrow. And the Inquisition on the top of their deck can't get any of the cards out of my hand, which is great. So hopefully they will play it. So we, we popped off a little bit. We can play the Karn. Playing Karn is... Uh, it's okay. There's a good chance we're just going to see a 4-4 four, 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 four Hex Drinker here. Yeah. Getting bonked. I think we're going to play Karn and go get a uh, bridge. Uh, this is mana neutral with Kinnon in play, so we can play that out freely. Good pickup. Play Karn. Yeah, we're just going to go get the bridge. They've played an Inquisition here. Maybe they have another one. If they do. That's just going to be where we're at, I guess. Um, although, their Hex Drinker is on level 3. It's a 4-4, four, four, so 3, 4, or four five, six. So they, they couldn't possibly get it big enough to get through. I still think Bridge is the best choice. You can also always Chump Block with the Goose. The Goose is not really adding much to the battlefield right now. And again, they showed last game they have lots of things like Assassin's Trophy and such to crack through my permanence, but... Okay. Yeah, kind of block. Sure. Bob Meyer Jr.
And we've got an Uro we can play, plus three mana. So I guess we're Uro first. So we'll go blue, blue, green, green. Okay, the era. Boop. What do we got? What do we got? What do you got? Ran six. All right, sure. We'll just play Ran six, ping the Dark Confidant. So this is three, four, five, six, seven. So that's not big enough to um, to make the Hex Drinker big enough to go through and just kill the Karn. And even if they can, then we just next turn we just deal with that. So what else can Karn get from me that's relevant? Um, I think we'll just get Tormod's Crypt here so I can wipe out their graveyard if need be. It's just free. It's free value. It's free real estate, baby. There's a pool in the back. <clears throat> it's also like weirdly synergistic with uh, Echo Vions if we get to that point. If anyone's familiar with the mono green Planeswalker deck in Pioneer, we are somewhat similar to that that deck in a bunch of ways. And uh, this is Abrupt Decay. Trophy, my Uro. Sure. It's very interesting. Okay. I'm going to be able to kill. Mm. <laughs> I have thoughts. Okay, you can kill whichever planeswalker you want. It's gonna be yeah, sure. It's okay. I what? I don't know what's going on over there, but I'm okay with it. Bob, ah, I see. Another hex trigger, sure. We, we didn't get EE to our... All oh, right, right, right. They're on zero cards in hand, so we're probably playing... We're playing Urza. And then next turn, we're definitely going to Echo. Target nothing. Play the bridge. All right. And could grab my Urian from exile, but is that better than casting Echo next turn? Probably. Okay, looks like we're locked in for this 4-1. Obviously, things can go terribly wrong for us. I do have two cards in hand, so they are able to attack with their Bob and their small Hex Drinker. But it shouldn't be a problem. The most devastating thing that they do off of that is kill my Karn, which is not a big deal. Maelstrom Pulse. Much worse. Got it. Well, we got the Urian. Sure. Actually, we didn't lose anything big there. That still can't attack. But in theory, it eventually will. If they attack with both their little creatures to try to kill my Karn, uh, Urza will get to pick off the Dark Confidant, which they do not want. I don't want to play that right now, but... Could get Walking Blista and play it for a reasonable size.
I'm going to start making decisions a little bit more quickly here, but... Yeah, we're going to get Walking Blissey and try to win the game with that. I've done it before. It's not the speediest thing in the world, but it does work. Two x is three x is four all right so ping the bob and i screwed up we can crank the ballista again one more time though So that's our last Ashiok activation in theory. Sure. I'll just pass until their end step. Crank my Ballista, then kill the Ashiok. And then we get to start having fun. Um, so so play your Ryan tap Kenan Slide, 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 slide. So we eventually do have the option of animating our bridge if we find a Karn and then killing it with, uh, sure. Killing it with our Walking Ballista. Uh, I could discard a Kinnon. And when you are trying to uh, kill your opponent with uh, walking ballista cranks. You want to add um, mana in exactly fours because it saves you a lot, and I mean a lot of clicks. So you kind of want to, um, you kind of want to look at your artifacts and everything in groupings of four. We do get to um, shortcut a little bit now because we have uh, Emery going on. They conceded, thank goodness. So that actually saves us a lot of time. But we go um, we go to half clicks, half the speed in clicking um, because what we do is we just shoot our Ballista until it dies and then we pool our, all our mana and we get to sort of get double that way. So glad that we finally got a reasonable result with this deck. Let's pop it up here um, before I finish up for the evening. Um, so yeah, Jiggy's crazy Song of Creation combo deck. We didn't get to combo off as much as I would have thought. So we're going to be back tomorrow playing the regular teamer 
um, Kinnon Arosa deck, but we're going to be playing it with two copies of Song, and we're going to see if that works and feels better. Um, thank you, Crypto Tank, for the follow. So, this combo centric version it was not to my taste at all. Um, if you do want to play something like this, I highly recommend cutting the Noxious Revivals entirely and the Thassa's Oracle. I think that's nonsense. I think what you want to do instead is um, a wonderful streamer by the name of Pi Gonti has been playing our deck. And what he did was he took our deck and he added a copy of Time Sieve to the sideboard. What Time Sieve lets you do is when you go off tearing through your deck with Song of Creation, or even other times where you don't, you eventually have this just, just massive mana, and then you just play a Karn, get the Time Sieve, and you should have some Karn Strucks in play. Even though you have to sacrifice five artifacts, on the next turn you should be able to use Emery and Goose and things like that to put together a pretty lethal swing. So Time Sieve... <clears throat> will effectively um, give you <clears throat> two or three turns, which should be able to end the game for you at that point. So you have to pick your moment to stop comboing off. Uh, but I, I think that's the better, more clever way to do it. Uh, so uh, I want to remind everyone who's hanging out here that if you check underneath the stream, um, you can see all the fabulous ways that my content is uh, shared both on YouTube, through Twitter, and uh, and different memes. Um, I would love to send you all to raid some channel, but it looks like there's absolutely nobody that I am connected to on Twitch that is streaming right now. So unfortunately, that's going to be it for the night. Uh, I will be hosting the food channel after uh, after this clears out. So anyone who is here and listening. Head on out and check out some other wonderful streamer. And I hope you guys have a fabulous night. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves, your friends, your family, your loved ones. And we passed 200 followers tonight. Huge, huge bump. That was fantastic. So I want to thank all the wonderful people who hosted me and rated me. You guys are great. So keep it up. Keep being amazing. And 